This recording um, is the review questions from chapter 10 in chemistry. And I'm just going to go through the ones that I assigned in class. Um, so we won't be doing every single problem. Um, the first one that we will start with is number six. And what number six says is if you inflate a balloon at room temperature and then put it in a freezer that is at the same pressure, what will happen to the size of the balloon? Okay, so um, we, if you use, um, we could start with the combined gas law. And the combined gas law says that P1, B1 over T1 is equal to P2, B2 over T2. Okay, and the problem tells us that um, the pressure is um, is staying the same. So we can go ahead and get rid of the pressure in our equations, and then we're left with this. Um, and maybe you recognize that as um, Charles' law. So Charles' law says that temperature and volume are directly proportional if the pressure stays the same. So this says if you inflate, you put it in a freezer. Okay, so you're going if you decrease temperature, then um, what would happen? What would have to happen to volume in order for that this value to stay constant? And the answer that is that volume would also have to decrease. So um, when you put it in the freezer and the temperature decreases, then the volume will also decrease, so the balloon would shrink. Uh, the volume of air in the balloon would decrease, and therefore the balloon would shrink. Okay, so that's number um, six. The next one that we'll do is number nine. And number nine um, says nitrogen condenses at 77K, and we are asked what is that temperature in degree C? Okay, so um, K is equal to degree C plus 273.15. Okay, so what, all we need to do here then is um, solve for degree C. So we'll subtract 273.15 from both sides. So the, the temperature K that we were given was 77. And that will give us our temperature in degree C. So 77K minus 273.15 will give us negative 196.15 degrees C. However, we're just subtracting here, so we can just go out to the ones place. So the answer to this then would be negative 196 degrees C. Okay, so this is the equation that we use um, for um, K. Degree C plus 273.15, so we just solved for degree C. Okay, the next one we'll do is number um, 12. And number 12 tells us that we have a piston that contains 45.6 milliliters of gas. Okay, 
um, and at a pressure of 814 torr. If the temperature doesn't change, what is the volume of the gas? So this would be P1. This would be V1. And we are asked what would be the volume of the gas. So we're asked what is V2 if the pressure, so P2, is 760 torr. So again, um, if we look at the combined gas law, P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. Okay, and the problem tells us that um, temperature doesn't change. So then we don't have to worry about temperature. So we can just get rid of temperature and we're just left with P1 V1 equals P2 V2. So we want to, the question asks us for V2. So we'll just solve this equation for V2. Divide both sides by P2. That gets rid of the P2 over there. So P1V1 divided by P2 is equal to V2. Okay, so now it's just a matter of plugging in values. So, and uh, as long as you have the same units, you, um, for pressure or volume, um, you can use anything. Um, in the ideal gas law, you have to use certain units, but in, in this case, we can use anything um, as our units. So the beginning pressure was 814 torr, P1. The initial volume was 45.6 milliliters. And the pressure at, for the end was 760.0 torr. Okay, so torr will cancel. We'll be left with milliliters, which is a volume measurement. So V2 then will equal, if you do that math, V2 will equal 48.8 milliliters. So 814. times 45.6 divided by 760. 48.84 milliliters, but with three significant figures, our answer would be 48.8 milliliters as the um, volume for V2. Okay, next we will do um, number 14. Okay, number 14, a helium balloon has a volume of 35.4 liters and we are at an altitude where the temperature is 0 0.00 degrees C and the pressure is 0 0.619 atmospheres. Then it tells us that the helium-filled balloon is brought back to the ground where the temperature is 29, 22.9, zero degrees C. And um, its volume is 21.1 liters. What is the pressure on the ground? OK, 
Okay, so this is P1, this is V1, this is V2, this is T1, and this is T2, and then this is P1, and we are asked to determine P2. Okay, so um, we're just going to use the ideal gas law, and we're going to solve for P2. So uh, not the, the combined gas law. So P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Okay, and we want to solve for P2. So I'm going to multiply both sides by T2. That gets rid of those over there. So multiply this times T2. And then I'm going to um, divide... Um, this side by V2, both sides by V2. Okay, and that leaves us then with what we were solving for. So P2 is equal to T2, P1, V1 over V2, T1. Okay, so that's the equation that we will work with. Um, now, um, remember that for both the ideal gas law and the combined gas law, your temperature has to be in Kelvin. So we need to change both T1 and T2 to Kelvin by adding 273.15. So T1... We're going to take 0, 0.00 plus 273.15. And so T1 will be equal to 273.15K. And then for T2, we're going to add 22.90 to 273.15. So T2 is going to be equal to... 296.05 296.05k okay and again I'm just reminding you that the reason you have to use Kelvin um, is because you can't divide by a zero um, so if 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 you if we were using the um, centigrade the Celsius scale or the Fahrenheit scale both of those have the possibility of having a zero, and we can't divide by a zero. So we have to use um, temperatures in Kelvin. Okay, so then we're just going to plug in numbers here. So I'm just going to erase this here. So P2 is equal to T2, which we just determined was 2. 96.05 times P1.619 atmospheres and then times V1, which is 35.4 liters. And then we will divide that by T1, which we determined previously was 273.15K. This is K. And um, V2, which is 21.1 liters. Okay, so then um, if we look at the units, we have a K here and a K here, so those are going to cancel. We have a liters here and a liters here. So the only units we're left with is atmospheres, and that's we're going for pressure, so that's what a unit should be left. So if we do the math there, and it looks like we can have three significant figures, um, the answer that you should get is 1.13 atmospheres. 
And I'm going to go ahead and run those numbers one more time in my calculator just so I make sure that math, I did the math, okay. Yeah, you'll get 1.12555, and with three significant figures, it's going to be 1.13. Okay, so that's number 14. Okay, the next one that we will do um, is number 16. How many moles of nitrogen are present in a an 819 milliliter container? at 23 degrees C and at 345 Tor. Okay, and they what we were asked to find is the number of moles. Okay, so you know that the combined gas law doesn't can't doesn't tell us anything about moles. So um, as soon as you see that you are asked to find something about moles, you should think right away that's the ideal gas law. So it's PV equals NRT. Um, and R is equal to 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres over mole times K. Okay, so that means that all our other units need to be consistent with those units. So our volume needs to be in milliliters, this milliliters needs to turn to liters. So we'll just move the decimal place three places, and it's going to be um, 0.819 liters. Um, the degree C needs to be changed to Kelvin, and we can do that by just adding 273.15. So the temperature in Kelvin um, is 292.2 degrees K. So that's just 23 degrees Celsius plus 273.15. And we can go out to the tenths place here. So 292.2 for the temperature in Kelvin. And then the pressure needs to be in atmospheres. So we need to change this tor. So 300 and 345 tor. And we need to change that to atmospheres. So atmosphere is going to go on top. And one atmosphere is 760 tor. Okay, so Tor will cancel, and what you will be left with for atmosphere is 0.746 atmospheres. Okay, so now we have everything um, in the proper units, and now we can take this equation and solve for N. So we're just going to divide both sides by RT. So RT, divide both sides by RT. So then what we have is that PV over RT is equal to N. Okay, so now we can just start plugging in numbers. So the initial pressure, um, or, or the pressure, was 0.746 atmospheres. The volume was 0.819 liters. Oh, I suppose those numbers. 0.819 liters. Uh, R is a given um, value. You'll be given that. 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres. Mole times Kelvin. And then the temperature 
um, was 292.2 K. Okay, so let's look at units. So here's atmosphere cancel, liters cancel, and Kelvin cancel. So all you're left with is mole. And if you do the math there, um, See, um, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here in this math. So this 345 divided by 760 is actually 0.454. I was looking at another problem. Okay, so this is actually 0.454 atmospheres. So I'm going to change this right here to 0.4. By four atmospheres. Okay, everything else I think um, will stay the same. Um, so if we do this times this divided by this, this times this divided by this divided by that, you will get that the number of moles is 0 0.0166. So that is number 16. And it looks like we can have three significant figures. So this, the zero in our answer is not significant, um, but the 166 is. So our answer is 0 0.0166 moles. Okay, next we will do um, number 17. So in number 17, we have 10 grams of water vapor. So water vapor, so it's water, but it's in a gas form. And the temperature is 134.5 degrees C. And the pressure of 567 torr. And the question that we are asked is, what is the volume? So find V. OK. So again, um, We'll look at the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. So see, we aren't given any pressure. Um, um, all right, actually, we, we're given pressure. We are given temperature. Um, and we are, R is a constant. We're asked to find volume. So in order to do that, we need to know N, the number of moles. But we have the grams of water, so we can easily change that to moles. So we have 10.0 grams of water. And one mole of water is equal to 18.02 grams. Okay, and I got that by taking, so water is two hydrogens, so it's going to be two times 1.01, .01, and then it's one oxygen, and oxygen is 16. Okay, so add those together, you're going to get 18.02 grams in a mole. Okay, so um, grams are going to cancel, you'll be left with moles of water and um, that's 0.555 moles. Okay, so now we know the pressure. 
We know the number of moles. This is a given. And the only other thing we have to do is make sure that we convert to the right unit. So um, let's convert um, this, temp this uh, pressure to atmospheres. So 567 torr and one atmosphere is 760 torr. Okay, so torr is going to cancel, and now um, the volume, the temp, the pressure I gave you before, it's 0.746 atmospheres. Okay, so we got that, and we got the pressure. Um, I'm just going to erase this pressure. I'm going to put that the pressure is in 0.746 atmospheres. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do is we need to convert the temperature um, from C to from Celsius to Kelvin. So 134.5 degrees C plus 273.15. And that will equal um, Four hundred seven point seven K four hundred seven point seven K. Okay, so let's erase this temperature up here and we'll put the temperature in Kelvin. Four hundred seven point seven K. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and erase these grams up here and put the moles of water, since we've already solved for that. So moles of water, we determined was 0.555 moles. OK, now I think we are ready to go. Um, so now we can, we have all that we need to use the ideal gas law. OK, so PV equals nRT. And we're what we're trying to find is V. So we'll just divide both sides by P. OK, so V is equal to nRT over P. OK, so n is the number of moles. R is the ideal gas constant, 0 0.0821. And it's. Um, Liters times the units are liters times atmospheres over mole times K. And then the temperature was 407.7 K. And then we'll divide that by P. And the pressure in atmospheres was 0.746 atmospheres. OK, so now if we look at the units, here's a mole on the top and a mole on the bottom. Uh, here's an atmosphere on the top and an atmosphere on the bottom. Here's a K on the top and a K on the bottom. So we're left with liters, and that's what we should have for volume. So 0.555 times 0 0.0821 times 407.7 divided by 0.476. And what you should end up with is that the volume of the gas in this problem, the volume of its water vapor, is 24, with three significant figures, 24.9 liters. OK, so that is number 17. Um, Let's look at number 18. Okay, 
so number 18 um, gives us this, this uh, chemical reaction. That's, yellow, that's chlorine, not um, carbon and iodine. It's chlorine. This is a solid. And it's going to decompose into two KCl plus three oxygens. Now, this is also a solid, plus three oxygens. And ox the oxygens are a gas. Okay. Um, and this tells us, so this is potassium chlorate. And we have 150 grams of this. And um, what we are asked for is what volume of oxygen will be produced at STP. So STP stands for standard temperature and pressure. And um, standard temperature and pressure is zero degrees C and one atmosphere. Okay, so um, with this problem, we get to use stoichiometry because we are given information about the potassium chlorate, but we are asked to find out something about oxygen. So in order to use stoichiometry, the first thing we have to do is we have to get um, in, we have to get it into molds. So I'm going to take this 150 grams of KClO3. I'm going to change that to moles. So I'm going two moles. So one mole will go on top. And how many grams? It would be one potassium, one chlorine, and three oxygens. So the potassium is... Um, I don't have those written down, but you can find them in your book. Um, potassium is 39.10. The chlorine is 35.45. And then the three oxygens are each 16. Okay, so if, if you add all that together, um, it's 122.55. So 122.55 grams in a mole. Okay, so we divide that 122.55 grams per mole. Okay, so grams cancel, you're left with moles. 150 divided by 122.5 is 1.224 moles with four significant figures. Okay. So we've just changed this um, grams of that to moles of that. Now that that's in moles, we can use stoichiometry to determine the number of moles of oxygen. Once we know the moles of oxygen, then we can use the ideal gas law to determine the volume of oxygen. Okay, so let's... Uh, so the number of moles of KCl that we had was 1.224. So 1.224 moles of KClO3. And there are three oxygens for each two of these. Three O2s for each two KClO3. Okay, so those are going to cancel. So this 1.224 times 3 divided by 2 gives us 1.836 moles of oxygen. Okay, now with that, we can 
Um, we can now answer the question that we were asked, and that is, what is the volume of oxygen? So um, PV is equal to nRT. PV equals nRT. We we're asked to solve for volume, so I'm just going to divide both sides by pressure. Okay? So then volume is equal to nRT divided by P. Okay, so now it's just a matter of plugging in numbers. Our number of moles we got right here, moles of oxygen, 1.836 moles. R is that ideal gas constant. Um, 0.0821 liters times atmospheres over moles times K. Okay, then what do we put in for temperature? So remember it said it was standard temperature and pressure. So standard temperature is zero degrees C. That needs to be in Kelvin. And to get to Kelvin, you just add, you take your degree C and you add 273.15. So our temperature would just be zero plus that, so it would be 273.15 K. And then um, standard pressure is one atmosphere. We were told it was standard temperature and pressure. Okay, so if you look at units, um, moles cancel. An atmosphere on the top and an atmosphere on the bottom, they cancel, and a K on the top and a K on the bottom. So the only unit we're left with is liters, and that's a volume measurement. So 1.836 times 0 0.0821 times 273.15 divided by 1, and the volume that you should get for number 18 is 41.2 liters. So our answer is that uh, with 150 grams of KClO3, when that decomposes, it will produce 41.2 liters of oxygen. Okay, number 19. Okay, number 19 says a chemist burns 567 liters of propane. And propane is C3H8. How many liters of carbon dioxide are made? So we want to know liters of CO2. Um, and we're given a pressure of 1.04 atmospheres and a temperature of 1,995 degrees C. Okay? So, um, one thing that um, you should remember is that um, we talked about Avogadro's law. And Avogadro's law told, that tells us that uh, when you're just dealing with gases, so if the only thing if the only things that you're interested in are gases, then Avogadro's law um, allows us to just look at the chemical reaction, and um, it will tell us the volume of each of those gases. So the chemical equation for this is C3H8. 
that's the meth, the um, propane. And when we add, uh, it's, it's a combustion reaction, so we're going to add oxygen. And it will produce CO2 and water. So this is going to produce three CO2s and four waters. Okay, so this is a gas. The oxygen is a gas, obviously. CO2 is a gas. And this is water vapor. So everything is gases. So we are given the liters of this. And we are asked to find the liters of this. So what Avogadro's law tells us is uh, when you're just dealing with gases, the numbers in front here um, not only tell us moles, they also tell us liters. So for this problem, it's very simple. You, you could you could use the ideal gas law and you'd get there, um, but there's a lot, it's a lot more there's a lot more work involved in doing that. So um, what we can say is if you have 567 liters of C3H8, and there, and we're interested in the CO2. So there are three CO2s for each one C3H8. Okay, so it's using stoichiometry, but now instead of it being in moles, because we're only dealing with gases, it can be in liters. So these are going to cancel. So it's 567 liters times three divided by one. And the answer to that is um, 1,701 liters of CO2. Liters, and we can have three significant figures. So we would just say, I guess we'd have to say 1.70 times 10 cubed liters to get our significant figures. Okay, so that's just that's an application of Avogadro's law. Um, both things that we were interested in were gases, and so. Um, if that's the case, you can go right into using stoichiometry uh, ratios because then the numbers here in front, this would be a 1, this would be a 3. Not only do they mean moles, they also mean liters of gas. Okay, the last one. Uh, actually, let's see. I don't know if I... I don't think... We're not going to do 23. Um, so nine, number 19 is the last one that we need to, that we need to do um, in this chapter.